winter, believe it or not, winter is the time that you get the best wildflowers in Sydney. So the absolute time to go for a walk is on a perfect winter's day. Welcome to EnviroTube News. Once again, we're at the Wildflower Garden, which is probably one of the premier educational locations in Karingai. And something very exciting is happening in a month's time. We're having the Karingai Council Wildflower Garden Festival. There's going to be walks, there's going to be talks. You can check out insects, you can check out bees, you can check, check out everything. Apparently, there's more species of wildflowers growing in Karingai in the Wildflower Garden than in the whole of Great Britain. So it gives you an idea of the diversity of uh, colours we're going to see because winter is the best time to see these things. So if you're looking for something to do on Sunday the 29th, I suggest you come here. Every year the Wild Things program splits 50 of these hives. Um, you may be wondering what the phone boxes are here, but they're hives of the stingless bee Trigona carbonaria. And, um, We've decided to make this more efficient by setting up these splitting stations. So we've got one here at the Wildflower Garden. How many hives would be at a splitting station? About five. Right, so that means if we have, what was it, five or six splitting stations, well you guys can do the maths, <laughs> we can do 30 splits in a relatively short amount of time. What's our waiting list at the moment? Well, we have about 200 people on the waiting list. Um, so at the rate we're going now, that could take a couple of years to get through. So these splitting stations, they're, they're really going to make a difference, I guess. Well, um, we're limited by time. So basically, um, if we can be more efficient about that, then we can get through the list a lot quicker. I really want to push it this year. You know, last year we did 50. Yeah. I really want to see if we can do over 100 this year. Do you think we're up for it? I think so. I think it'll be... A lot of fun will be hard, but um, I'm really keen to do that as well. <laughs> You've been working on the open day. Can you tell us a bit about what we're planning? We thought it'd be a good idea and really interesting for everyone um, if they can actually bring their hives uh, to a splitting station and we can show them how to split it themselves and we'll obviously help them. And um, that's just a great way of getting it all done and actually being involved in the process. That is going to be one crazy day. Can you imagine 50 people turning up with 50 hives, splitting them, bees <laughs> flying everywhere? The bees get on you and you try not to touch them or brush them away because that actually kills them. But they are known to nibble. They, sort of. Oh yeah, well, actually I have been bitten and it's not too bad, just a little pinch. No, but, but you're um, not allowed to take revenge, you're not allowed yeah. to pinch back. While we're here talking about bees, yeah. if you're interested in wildflowers, have you heard about Mugamara? No, what's that? Mugamara is this nature reserve that's only open six weekends a year. Can you imagine six weekends a year, otherwise completely closed to the public? Why is that? The idea is to keep it as pristine as possible, to keep it as free as, uh, from human influence as possible. If you're interested in wildflowers, mm. like I was saying before about the Festival of Wildflowers here, amazing diversity, well Mugamara is just the same. Plus they have an extinct volcano there. Where is this place? If you uh, go to National Parks, the website, or if you even contact us, we can tell you about the Mugamara Walk. In fact, we have a brochure here. <laughs> and if you're a member of Bush Care or Wild Things, you'd know about this. And uh, sort of it talks about the Mugamara Walk and what to expect. Cost $10, so bring some money, but it's a pretty good value. So we're here at another splitting station and um, it's just great to see here the different colours that um, the Trigona carbonaria bees collect resins from the whatever trees are around and decorate their little entrance hive. This one has um, a lot of red in it as well as some orange but it can range from right from black to uh, bright yellow. We've had a few calls recently about the bees depositing some black looking little balls at the entrance of their hives. Um, so we've had a look at that and basically it's just the bees doing some spring cleaning. They're just empty casings from the pupae who have hatched. Are these casings? Yeah. You've got no idea, like no wonder people have been ringing up uh, asking about the casings. If you actually look really closely, it looks like dirt. It's not dirt at all. There must be thousands and thousands of casings just on the ground that the bees have emptied. Australian native bees aren't supposed to come out when it's less than 18 degrees. And yet out of the six hives here, we have one hive. Look at this one. The bees are out. Go figure. This hive is obviously incredibly productive. Lots of bees being born. We're definitely splitting it this year. Maybe we'll try for two splits this year. Well, this has been this month's EnviroTube News. Thanks a lot for listening. 
we're really looking forward to a big attendance at the Kringai Wildflower Festival. Give me string! <laughs> They're making it pretty tough to do in Viratube News. But you know, Tasha, that's one of the joys of living in Kuringai. Yeah, sure, it's sort of the wildlife can present some hassles for so sound and that sort of thing, but it's really, really great to have them with us, isn't it? It's definitely something you treasure. The Wildflower Garden Festival, you've got to be there. It's something really special. You're going to be there, Tasha? Yes. Right, I'm going to be there. So if you want to meet some of the people from EnviroTube News, turn up to the Wildflower Festival. I hope people know about the wild bees, the trigona bees that we're uh, offering to everyone, and that I hope they join the program.